Okay, good morning, everybody. As we start the Chitas of the day. Today is Friday, 22nd day of Thomas. We are holding in the portion of Pinchas. And we are holding the sixth reading, Shishi. which is on chapter 28, verse number 16. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Ubachodesh Hadishen, in the first month. Baba Asim Lachodesh, in the fifth, in the 14th day of the month, the month of Nisan. Pesach Hashem, it's a Passover to God. Verse 17 of Achamish Asim. And on the 15th day of the month, it's seven days. You should eat matzahs for seven days. Verse, uh, verse 17. Verse 18. Verse 18. And the, uh, on, the, on, this, on the seventh day is a holy calling. And on, the, on that day is a calling, a holy calling. You're not allowed to do any work. So now she says, even essential work such as uh, prevention of loss, which is made on the intermediate days, between the first two, the first to the beginning of the holiday and end of the holiday, which is allowed, but on the Yantiv, you're not allowed to do any work, even if you're going to lose, uh, even if you're going to lose money. Verse 19, you to bring a sacrifice, you have to bring a sacrifice to God, um, a burnt offering to the Lord, two bull, two young bulls, shnayim vayel echad, one ram, v'shiva cross and seven lambs, and a shana which is a year old. To me, 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 lechem, it should be unblemished. So that's just part of the bulls are corresponding to Avram Avinu, who says, and to the cattle did Abraham run. Elim, the rams is is to Yitzchak. I said on the reason because Akedas Yitzchak was a ram. Kvasim Keneged Keneged Yaakov is corresponding to Yaakov because Jack Yaakov separated the lambs as he's when in the situation with Lavan, he separate says separate the land. I saw this commentary in a Moshe Hadashin, and tells Rash says where he saw this 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 interpretation. Verse 20. When the Khazam sailors below of Hashem and you have to bring a meal offering, flying mixed flour. Shlesha Sain Lapar, three tenths of, 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 of for each bull, Ushnei Sain Lail, and two tenths of flour for each ram. That's what you shall do. Verse 21, be sudden, be sudden, be sudden, and then you shall offer one tenth for each lamb. The Shiva Takvotin for the seven lambs. Verse 22, we see the Echatas Echad in one young male goat. To bring forgiveness upon you. Verse 22. Besides the, the, the morning oil of the Tamid, you should bring this. So, this is besides what we mentioned yesterday, the oil which is brought every single day, which is called the Tamid in the morning and the in, the, in the afternoon. You shall do this offering for seven days. Uh, a fire offering, a spirit of sanctification and satisfaction to God. That's why, again, as I said yesterday, every day of, of Pesach, there is a Musaf. This is the extra offering. Yatav and Yiskai, you shall do it as follows. You shall do it as an offering with its libation. Uh, like this, 
Rashi should not be decreased progressively, as in the case of the of Sukkot. And Sukkot, the Torah says, it comes, it, becomes, it starts with a higher number and it comes lower every day. But on Pesach, every day was the same thing. From the first to the, to the sixth day. But Yeh Mashvi, verse 25 on the seventh day. Mikha Kodesh Yeh Lachem, it shall be called to you a day of calling, a day of holiness. Komalech HaSavayda Lesasi, and I'll do any work on the seventh day. I don't forget in in in, in Chutzla, the, the 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 sages added a day on the first of the holiday and a day on the second holiday. So that's why Pesach in America out of Israel is eight days and not and not seven days because we add another day. Verse twenty six. Yemabukudim, and then you have the day the the holiday, the day of the first fruits, the holiday of Shavuos. When you're going to offer a new meal offering, Hashem to God, Shavuos seichem. In the festival of weeks, Shavuot, Mikra Kaidi Yilachem, which can be called a calling, a holy day to you, Komalecha Savaita Lesasim. You shouldn't do any kind of a work. So that's the, the holiday of Shavuos, is one day in the Torah. Again, out of Israel, it's two days. But in the Torah, it's one day. And also in Israel, it's one day. The festival of weeks is called Shavuos. It's called the first fruits, also called the holiday of Bikurim, the first fruits, because of the two loaves which were, were first, were, which, were, which were the first of the wheat offering brought from a new crop. Verse 27. burnt offering to God. you shall bring uh, two young bulls. I one ram, Shivakos and and seven lambs in the first year. When a part of it's 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 mincha, it's meal offering. Soil is bulolo bashemen. It needs to be a uh, fine flour mixed with oil. Shleisha soil la pora echad. Two three tenths for each bull. Shnei soil la elechad and two tenths of each ram. Now, if you remember the holiday davening in the Musaf, we say this parsha. We say this in the Musaf of the holiday davening. Verse 29, he saw the one tenth for each lamb, the Shiva Takbasim for the seven lambs. Verse 30, see the Mechalchapalechem and one male goat to Tony. Verse 31, Levad Elas Atomis Ken is besides the morning offering, the Shachris, which needs to be brought, Umanchasa, and its meal offering, Tasu, Timimim, Yulachem and Skayim, which all be unblemished as well as their libation. What does that mean? Now she said, even the libation shall be unblemished. Our rabbis learned here from the wine that had to be turned moldy is unfit for libation. To him means it needs to be good wine, not wine that has turned a little bit vinegar a little bit. First chapter 29, verse number one. Now we, we just finished. We did Pesach, we did Shavuos, now we go. Pesach is the first holiday in the year. And now we go to Shavuos, and now we go to Rosh Hashanah. The next holiday after Shavuot. Ubachaydish Hashvi in the seventh month, Bechalachaydish in the first day of the month. Mikra Kaydish Yerachem, this is Rosh Hashanah. It should be a day of calling. Kamalecha Savedal Isasu, you're not allowed to do any work. Yoim Trua Yerachem, it's a day of chauffeur for you. The calling of the shofar. Verse 2, Vasisim oil and ech the chayach lachem. You have to make an oil, you have to make a burnt offering. Pare ben bokar ech and again one, 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 one bull. Ayel ech and one ram. Vos vene shona, shiva tvim and seven lambs. Umen chasam and its meal offering, sailors below Bashem and blind fowl mixed with oil. Shleisha stain lapar, three tenths of flour for a bull. And two tenths for a realm. He's got an ash and a one tenth of flour for each lamb. The Shiva Takvatsim for the seven lambs. And again, verse five is seed Izim Echad, one male he goat, Chatos as a as a as atonement, a chapai to bring forgiveness to you in the holiday. Now don't forget the Shishan is in the first of the month, or it's a Swedish. 
We already mentioned on this fight that she had to bring an oil. The Vad Eilas Rabbi decided to burn off in a new month. Um in the Chasa of Eilas Atom made them also the day, the regular day offering that was brought on every day. So again, you have to don't forget that it's a don't forget that it's it's the new month, it's 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 in the daytime, it's every day. And continual burnt offering and its meal offering, it's libation as prescribed for them. The spirit of sanctification, satisfaction, I'm sorry, instill Hashem and burnt off in the God. And as he says, besides the burnt off in the new month, the additional offering of the beginning of the month, it's Chaydish, it's a new month, which is on the first day of the new year. Verse 7, now you come to the 10th of the month, of the 10th of the month of the 7th month, which is Yom Kippur. It shall be a, a, a day of calling, of holiness for you. You shall afflict your souls. And you're not allowed to work. So it's Yom Kippur. You have to fast, and you have to also not, not allow to work. Verse 8. You have to bring an oil again to God. Five ben bakar again. One ram. One, one, I'm sorry, one bull. I elech one ram. Kvas me shot a shiva tmimim. And to bring seven, seven lambs. Tmimim and chav. Askasam and then there is libation. There is the libation. Mechas seus blu ba shemim. Then there's a meal offering. Shall be fine flour mixed with oil. Three tenths for a bull and two tenths for the ram. Verse ten. He saw and he saw the kavis a echad and then ten, one tenth for each lamb. She was a kvatim for the seven lambs. Verse 11. Still is it echad chatos. You need a young, a young male goat for the sin offering. Milvad chatos akipurim. Besides, if you remember the how the the achrei mois was there, the Torah talks about all of us needs to be brought in kippur. So this needs to be brought. Because it's the day of a holiday, then you have to bring the the, the whole Yom Kippur service, which is a whole other service. Besides the chatas that you put it, besides the off sin offering of the Yom Kippur, ve'elas atamid, and besides the day every day offering, umin chasa and their meal offering, v'niskeim and their libations. The Rashi says, besides the atoning offering, this is the goat offering. Whose blood is sprinkled in the inner chamber, mentioned the portion of Achre Mois, and two, the sin offering. The continual burnt offering, besides the regular burnt offering, every morning you had to bring a burnt offering. You had to offer these, burnt, you had to bring it, there was a bull, and there was a sacrifice for Aaron, a lot of the whole, the whole schedule of Yom Kippur, which is mentioned in Achre, in Achre Mois. And their libation. This refers to additional offering, which is stated to phrase, you shall offer up, which is not written, but implied. This denotes the command besides the continual offering, and its meal offering shall bring these libations. The same applies to every time their libations is mentioned in connection with all the festival, except for when we mention the connection with the festival of Sukkot. It's going to be soon mentioned next the next reading, tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's Chitas. All expression of libation and their libation, its libation, and the connection with them refers to the continual sacrifice. Nor are they expressed in any commands since libations of additional offerings are written separately for each and every day. And that completes the, the Chumash of the day. And now we go to the Tanya of the day we are holding Seventh chapter of Igenes Hatshuva. And the Alter Rebbe is talking about what an Aveda, what a sin, God forbid, accomplishes and does to a Jew, to a Jew, to his body, to his soul, especially to his neshama, and especially to the source of his soul, which is God's name, which is God. Now to that said, Liam, I'm really talking, we started talking about the Avera of Kodis. In Torah, we have a concept 
two, two concepts in the Torah that are called kuris, that you cut off. God says he cut his to cut his certain sins. God says, I will cut you off. And then we have the concept of misib de shamayim, death from heaven, so to say. That God says, I will punish you. I'm going to punish you. Don't say exactly what kuris is, what the cutoff is, or what the death of heaven is. So the say to say that it means that a person will die by 50, one means 50, one be 60. So, uh, that they will die a young age, so to say. Now, to that went to explain how, even though people have done these sins, that they have lived a longer life. Because we, re because the people, because we are receiving our, our energy, not from purity. When we receive our energy from our pure side, then the if we cut ourselves or we sunder this pure this purification, this 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 energy of purity, they can't live. But since we are receiving in Gaulus our energy from impurity, so the impurity continues to exist. And therefore, that's a sad situation in a way that we are receiving our energy and our life force from impurity. And that's why the Gemara says, Talmud says. That the living, that the wicked are in their lifetime are called dead. They're not dead, they're physically alive. But they're in essence receiving their life force from impurity, which is dead. So now, now the Alter continues. This is a little bit uh, a very, a very powerful teaching of the Alter But we have to learn it. We have to see what the, you have to realize. That's what the Alter says. We got to realize what our sin does. We have to think about it. And have a little bitterness over it to awaken up chupa within us. So let's learn this, even though it might be hard to learn. Let's learn it. And so my person might think, well, I never did such a sin. It's a kodis is like, you know, you know, uh, I've done a sin. I ate chametz on Pesach. Kodis to kodis. Uh, there's, you know, you have these are the biggie sins that the Torah, the Torah writes. If you if you do. I'll cut you off in the Jewish nation. And uh, these are big sins. Most of us, uh, Baruch Hashem, don't do these sins. So most of us might think we're out of, we're out of the, we're out of the, the problem. Even one who didn't violate the, the sin of Kodes. If he didn't do the sin of Shemayim, for example, even a vain omission is considered Punishable by heaven, punishable by death by heaven. A guy got them. And a shot of his callous person that didn't do major sins, he's done a lot of small sins. So a person might think he can get away with it. So now that ever says you can't. Alpha became Achish and Pagan and Shaman, that's what it is. The problem is that a lot of little sins is like a big sin. You keep on, we keep on doing little sins, little sins, little sins. These little sins grow into a big sin. Because every little sin gathers. Because they have, they, they defect the spirit of the divine soul. As an analogy of the fine strands of rope that are defected or severed, as noted above, in the beginning of chapter 5. Which describes 630 strands that together compile the lifeline of the soul. When one transgression of the 600, one of them strands is severed, so you start to you start to cut one little rope at another at a time and say it's oh my still the rope is still strong. Slowly you sunder one, sunder two, sunder ten, one eleven, twelve. You keep on making dents, and then the, the rope starts to lose its strength. It starts to lose its connection. You're right. We're only doing one Aveda, one Aveda, one Aveda, one Lashonara, one uh, it's a little thing, but every little thing ultimately multiplies into big. Through accumulation of many sins. Because you have many sins, can be like one big sin. So you cannot talk yourself in, oh, but these are small sins. I don't know how many small sins equals up a big sin, but it can equal up a big sin. 
If you do the same sin over and over and over again, like Lach Nara, like evil talk, we do it over and over and over again. It's not a sin that the Torah says you're going to cut off from God. It's not a sin that God says they're going to punish you by death. But it keeps on growing and growing and growing until it's as big as a biggie. So far from merely damaging the self same strand repeatedly, the repetition of even the same sin weakens and jeopardizes the rope as a whole. Like the man of the prophet compares. The prophet compares the, 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 a sin to the cloud that dims the light of the sun. So you can have a cloud that will dim the light of the sun to the whole world. But to whoever, whoever's on, uh, underneath of that sun, it dims it to everybody. It's only one cloud. The verse said, I have erased your transgression like a thick cloud. Can be dissipated. This refers to the grave strength that are barriers between the internal aspect of the power of the flowing forth from the from God's name and the, and the divine soul. Like the separation of a thick dark cloud that stands between the sun and the earth with all of the inhabitants. And then the verse continues, and your sin is like a cloud in our Venus colors. Shalom Dosh Makebe. These, so you have on and of the Choshuk, you have a thick cloud, and then you have a cloud. A thick cloud is a big sin. The world comes dark. A regular cloud, the world doesn't come dark, but it still separates. It separates, like if it's like you have a, a rain cloud, out the, 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 it becomes dark. The, the, the city becomes dark. But that there's always clouds. It chills you from the sun, and maybe takes away the sun away, but there's still light outside. That is, the, but still blocks the sun. And I made this college on Doshba Kaver. These are these lesser sins. The Talmud says a man tramples, tramples under his feet. What means a man trapples on this feet? He says, I don't worry about it. I'm not worried about a small sin. I'm worried only about the big sins. Small sins, don't worry. Small sin anyway. Uh, but you don't realize a small sin is a cloud. And the more you do, the more I do small sins, the more I big, build, build up this cloud. I'm Abdilin, Kavdalas, Anakal, Vekalosh, Adarach Marshal. These sins obscure. And does a thin and wispy cloud. As another illustration. If one obscures the sunlight streaming in through his window. With a many fine and flimsy curtains. So you take a many flimsy curtains. It's like you take a very thick curtain. So you can have a person that takes a very thick curtain and blackens out his room. Or you can have a person that takes a bunch of shmatas and he also blackens out his room. Ultimately, it blackens out the room. So, so too, what's the difference if you do one big avera that blackens out your room? You do many flimsy small averas that ultimately blacken out the room. The kosham namish ba nimshol, so is exactly in the nimshol now. With all those sins that we trample on, we say it's nothing because they seem little important, little important. They obscure the divine. Ultimately, they accomplish the same thing. Whether you think, whether, whether I think it's small or, or big, ultimately, they accomplish the same concept. And you're right. I put a many, I didn't, I didn't take one big sin. I put many sins in front of me. And that many sins ultimately darken, they separate, they don't let the energy of life come within me. And especially those that are mentioned by the sages. Those that are mentioned by the sages. 
that 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 they warn against doing. But the Chazal say that when you do something like this, you are actually doing idolatry and morality and bloodshed. And and you might not think it's a it's a big thing, but by by us doing these things, we're doing we're doing exactly that. For example, ignoring the needy. One might think, it's not a big thing. It's not my obligation. If I ignore the greedy, the, the needy, I walk away from a needy person, I'm doing Avedazara, Gila Arois, and Shvechaz I might not know, but I might be doing that. That's why I tell people, when, I mean, to go, it's more says, call our patient yad nice and like. If somebody reach, puts out his hand, give him. Let's say to give him a million dollars. Give him stuck. Don't ignore any needy person. Always give, give charity. Always give charity. When she calls me, Shaman Hadavim, the Vecha Bayaz, it says, it'll be, it says, Concerning charity, be beware least there be in your heart something unworthy. That you're gonna think that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reach out and help the person. You're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna become I'm gonna I'm gonna become greedy. I'm gonna become selfish. Ubilial, when the Pasik over here says Bilial, what does that mean? He avedas avedas. That's the expression of idol worship. So Belial, here trying to unworthy, is used also to in idolatry. Elite ale without a god. Have another god. So the trader says, if I hold myself back and I think somebody is unworthy of my help, it's like worshipping on a Vedazana. It's like worshipping an idol. If somebody's a tail bear, lush and hard, evil talk. What the Gemara says, the Talmud says, talking evil, hashkula, when one talks evil, talks negative about somebody else, it's like Aveda Zara, he's worshiping an idol. Gila Arayas, he's an immoral person and he's a murderer. In the Torah, you have three separate things. Idol worshipping, immorality, and murder. The Gemara then says, with one talk of evil talk, I've done all three. And now, let's think about the next thing. I'll call our Christ, whoever gets angry. The Gemara says, whoever gets angry, it's like he worshipped an idol. The Chaymishe Gassis Ruach, somebody who's arrogant. Is like worshiping an idol. There are so many of this in the Gemara of sins whose punishment is not as severe as idolatry and the like, but which nevertheless affects a similar spiritual blemish. So the, the Chassidus says, what is the meaning? It's like worshiping of it is other. Yeah, you're not going to get punished like where you I, I, When a somebody talks about Shnada, he's not punished per se, like a person who worshipped an idol, because in the Torah, a person who worshipped an idol is put to death. A person who, who had an affair is put to death in the Torah. A person who murdered somebody is put to death. So if I talk Lashnara, I'm not put to death. But the blemish is as if you kill somebody. The blemish of, your, of my act is as if I killed somebody, is as if I worshipped an idol. So you're right, you're not, you're always looking at, people always look at the punishment. We evaluate the sin by the punishment. And Chassidit says, don't evaluate the sin by the punishment. Evaluate the sin by the effect of the sin that has on the world. That's the way I need to evaluate the, the, the sin. By the way it affects the world. And if I talk Lashon Hara, it affects the world as if I'm murdering somebody. It affects the world as if I am doing immoral things. 
it affects the world as if I'm worshipping idols. And the Gemara says, when somebody talks about Shonara, three people are affected. The one who heard it, the one who said it, and even the one who was said about. The Gemara says 95% of death in the world comes to talking evil. If people would stop talking evil, 95% of the world would stop dying. So let's look at the effect of the sin, not what the punishment of the sin is. It's not its punishment. Effect. But Tom Mateta can add call him. It's self to learning to Mateta. That I don't learn Mateta. What effect of the world does it have on the world that I don't learn Torah? Think about that. How much brittle Torah, how much neglect of Torah I, 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 I'm, I'm supposed to learn. I'm not learning. As the sages said, God, God said, God has overlooked idolatry, immorality, and bloodshed. But he says, I cannot overlook the sin of neglect of Torah. Very powerful, the butter. And all the old interpretation of the Gemara, but, but not, that's, not, that's not the point of here. The point of here is you see that the Gemara expresses the severity of lack of learning Torah. And that's why in the Shema at night, when before we go to sleep, we say a, we say a very powerful paragraph that we accept upon ourselves all the punishable death sentences in the Torah. The Kabbal Dallas Mitzvah the one accepted the four executions of the court and so on. Why can we, we sundered? If you listen, if you read the 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 the, 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 the prayer there. We have sundered through lack of distance and lack of that mitzvah. We have sundered our, our connection with God's name. Besides, according to the say, the hidden and mystical dimensions of the Torah, who even defected the Yud of the touch of God's name, is Chayiv Skilo. It's I is I really obligated in lapidation. I put him by hey, somebody who, who defected the letter hey is 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 incurring burning. But he's vav, somebody who incurred the vav is the chai of headache. It's, it's incurred, punished by the sword. And a person who has defected the last letter hey incurs the strangulation. Somebody, for example, didn't read the Shema a day, he affected the Yud. Filling, if he didn't put on filling, he affected the hay. Sitsis, if he doesn't wear pits, he didn't put on sitsis in a day, but he's Vav, in the letter Vav. Spila, if he didn't pray, but he's hay, etc. There's no Kabbalistic, and it's actually in your Siddha. You can open up the Siddha, you'll see it says over there. What you uh, affected during the day affected God's name by these different sins. And then from this, we can learn all sins, how they affect God's name. Or, and as after that, it says a bit of Taylor can call up. And the sin of Taylor, lack of learning Taylor, which is equivalent to them all. Because the learning Torah has all the God's, all the letters of God's name, while while all these simple, these separate mitzvahs are connected to different letters in God's name, while the learning of Torah has within all the letters of God's name, all the above lends all the, the main thing is all of the above lends us the thinking person to a contrite heart. Think about what we have done, what I have done to my soul. As he grows aware of the blemishes caused even by his supposedly lesser sins. This contrition, the second preparation step, along with, a, along with the true direct path to the lower level of repentance. For contrition crushes the clip and sitrach. 
We have to break that system. We have to break that 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 honor. We have to take apart that that cloud. And enables to, enables a man to repent truthfully, earnestly regretting his past misdeeds, and firmly resolving to better his future ways. Very powerful uh, Tanya of the day. Today is the 22nd day of the month. Um, with 22nd day of the month, which is chapter 106, 107. I'm sorry, today, yeah, today, I'm, I'm lost in the day. Today, 22nd or 23rd? Yes, yeah, so it's 106 and 107. And uh, you would uh, done the chitas of the day. I want to wish you all a good, a wonderful Shabbos. Make sure you learn the chitas tomorrow by yourselves. And we'll meet each other on Sunday morning as we start the new Parsha, Latis. This Shabbos is Shabbos of Varchim. It's the Shabbos you blessed in the month, which is going to be the Shredish next Shabbos, I believe. The Shredish of. I want to wish you a wonderful, beautiful Shabbos, a happy Shabbos, a healthy Shabbos. It should be a Shabbos for good things for the entire world, the entire Jewish nation. And Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful and beautiful Amen. Shabbos. Good Shabbos, Rabbi. Good Shabbos.